I'm Robin. Hi. I'm Latwana. I'm Shanae. We I'm have Shanae. a special <laughs> guest today that I'm going to introduce really quickly. We are so excited to have her on. She is an amazing single mother. And I want to point that out because it's so important how amazing she's done. She's got three beautiful children, um, an adult child, a 17-year-old child, and a 14-year-old child. And today we're going to be talking about her 17-year-old son who is at the University of Redlands. And she's going to share with us her journey to his college experience, his college uh, you know, entrance and all that. He just started in August, right? Yes. yes. Well, Shanae, I'm going to start off with the first question. And ladies, I'll just bounce it off to you guys for the next questions. We know that Lawrence, your son, Lawrence Williams, he was an AP student. He took almost all or all AP classes. All AP classes. All AP classes. This is what's so amazing about him. I get chills talking about him. He's, first of all, he's Jaden's best friend and twin. Like when I first met him, I literally thought it was my son. I was like, why is he leaving? Where is he going? That's my kid. I was talking to him. They look alike like that? Yes. Uh -huh. I'm yes. I was yeah. Even the coaches, like at first, I thought they were the same person. Like I didn't know it was two of them. <laughs> but anyway, um, he didn't get a starting position until his senior year. Talk to us question? about Where did he go to high school. Where did he go to high oh, school? Oh, Centennial, Centennial High okay. School, Corona. Okay, Centennial yeah. High School with Jaden. So he didn't get a starting position until his senior year. But tell us, uh, Shanae, about what you saw in him. What was his grind like, both in the classroom <laughs> and in football, to get that starting position? Because I remember him being frustrated, you know, asking Jaden, like, "What am I doing wrong?" And we knew he wasn't doing anything wrong. But tell us his journey and what you saw about his grind. Well, with as far as AP, he's been an AP student since junior high. Um, he's always carried a 4.2 and above uh, GPA. Um, when was it? Prior to COVID, he had a back injury. And it was against, he was playing, I think they played Modern Day or Bosco. That's right. And yes, and he went out for a tackle and he said he heard something pop. <sighs> yes. And remember, I called you. I was nervous. I was stressed. I'm like, something's not right with him. So yeah. he went on the whole, the journey to rehab. And thankfully, due to COVID, that's what helped. Because um, he was able to just focus on rehabbing. I didn't have to tell him to go into the garage. We have a full uh, gym in the garage. I mean, he did it all on his own. He worked out with, the, uh, with Jay and Lamar. He worked out with Coach Rob you know, coach B, he worked out with everyone. So he was bound and determined and, you know, he pushed himself so he can show Logan that he deserved the starting position. And as we could see, he, he did it. You know, I was very, very proud of him because he, he pushed it. through all the hurdles, the obstacles, everything. He just by far, and he didn't let it stop him at all because he could have just stopped and gave up, but he did. I what have a grade was that that he was in when he did that? Was he a junior, senior? When was that that he, um, he in, hurt himself? It was he was um, sophomore. He was a sophomore. Okay. Yeah, and it was towards the ending season. of the ending of the season. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about um, how was he feeling? Did you know in his senior year, towards the end, about being able to play at the next level and the collegiate level, was that something that was a target for him or, or a goal for him? Well, um, his major is accounting. So, you know, he loves math. Math just comes natural to him. And his goal was to play football. Um, and he, he doesn't have the NFL on the horizon. But, of course, if it happens, it happens. He, de he did want to play football and be able to get a, a good education. So he wanted to make sure – Whatever school he went to, they did have a good accounting program for him. Um, and that was, you know, the start of the journey. Okay. Ladies, you have a question for her? Well, I would like to know. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, I would like to know when did his love for football begin? Oh, my gosh. He's been playing Pop Warner football since 5-6. He played with the Corona, uh, the Corona Chargers Okay. the whole entire time. And then went to high school and, and started playing football. So he's always loved football. And I want to add that even though you raised him 
without a father in the home, you have an amazing father and brother who have been those male figures for him. And then enter Jaden, then Lamar and coach Rob, everyone else, they stepped in and kind of took him under his wing. But I remember him saying, mom, Jaden has been taught or heard things from his dad that I've never heard. Do you remember that conversation? Yeah. yeah, What was that about? Tell me about that because that kind of, Um, then I was so proud how you handled it and how he's so resilient. Well, of course, you know, I'm not going to show him that, you know, it breaks my heart because, you know, without the father being in the household, that was hard in itself and me having to be the mother and the father. But I just, you know, stayed strong and told him, I said, you have a good circle around you. I mean, and everyone has been very good towards him. You know, my brother takes him in um, every summer because he works down. He's a a manager at Exos. So he would go down there and train with, you know, the athletes down there, some of the combine athletes, and he loved it. So a lot of the times each year that he goes down there, some of the same people that are down there, they know him. And can't believe how big he's gone, you know, big he's gotten year after year. Then comes Lamar, who took him under his wing and treated him like, you know, that was his son as well. So, you know, he really looks up to Lamar as well. And then you have Coach B, Shelby, Rob, everyone did, you know. So, I mean, and I've raised him to be a respectable, uh, respectable young man. And he doesn't give me any problems. I never have to worry about him, you know, just being disrespectful doing things he shouldn't be doing. And he's always made me feel, you know, that I can trust him. Yeah. So I have a question about your, his experience with COVID because that was a tough time for so many athletes and just students in general. So as he was going through that process of um, rehabbing through COVID, which you said was beneficial, it also for a lot of kids and your son included, it didn't allow them to get in front of college coaches. So how right. did his experience transition from COVID to then being exposed and being recruited and looked at by college coaches? How did that look? Um, I can tell you that I think it had, you know, a little bit of effect on him because he wasn't able to get all that playing time or, you know, and the coaches weren't able to see him at, you know, his finest. And, then there was a lot of where, you know, he wasn't getting the notoriety that he should have been getting as far as like, you know, from school to tell the other coaches, you know, look at him, you know, try to help him out. Um, and that was a little disappointing to me, but, you know, he didn't let it break his spirit. He just still continued on and, you know, try to show the coaches what he was made of. And, you know, hopefully someone would, you know, um, reach out to him and have him come for a visit. Um, and try to pick him up. Now, your brother, Coach Holmes, and Lamar Mm -hmm. both were sending his film to coaches, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes. So at least he had that Mm -hmm. aspect, and that's when you were able to actually take him on at least a couple of visits, right? Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, when you started checking him, checking out different schools and finding a good fit for him. Well, we went on three tours um, back (laughs) east. Um, and you know, they were all private schools. Of course, they're not D1, they're they were D3 private schools. And you know, we felt good about it, but it was like bait and switch with him. You know, yeah. they promised us everything, and then when it comes down to sitting down and going over the numbers, it's something totally different. You know, so he was a little disappointed in that. And you know, they told us at the private schools that. Uh, Private schools can't give you a full 100% scholarship because if they could, they would give it to us. But it didn't even seem like it was even a good percentage, you know, and I even told him, I said, if we're going to pay this kind of money, you might as well go to a UCLA, a USC and walk on because if I'm going to be spending $70,000 just for you to go out of state, I said, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, on top of that, you pay out of state fees for the students. Exactly, right. So So you were actually going to the schools. He was actually sitting in front of, or was most of this um, via Zoom or phone call? No, we went. We went to we went to two schools. He went to two on his own because they were local. But we did. Him and I flew. um, We went to Friends and we went to um, Lawrence Tech. 
And he really liked Lawrence Tett. Were those considered official visits or unofficial visits? Did you have to take care of the expenses to fly? Because like in um, in the case with like D1 schools, and maybe I'm not sure if it's the same with D2 and D3 schools, if you are asked to come to campus on an official visit, then they will take care of your travel fees. So was that the same? Um, How did that work? They took care of the hotel accommodations and the food, and we had to pay for the airfare. Okay. Yes. Um, now, friends took care of airfare for us and the um, and the uh, room. Okay. But not Lawrence Tech. They didn't take care of a hundred percent. Okay. So yeah. it's kind of like I think it's probably up to them to decide how much they right. want to invest in each student. So it's exactly so much money that's allotted for each one. Right. Okay. So and this was, I'm sorry, Nilka, with football, because Nilka has shared with us too, that with Jaden, you know, visits are different for football because there's so many kids, whereas basketball, usually it's just one person per visit. So was your son along with others on his visit or was it just him by himself? No, there was other kids down there as well. Um, but now when we went to Lawrence Tech, which is in uh, Michigan, there were kids from out in Michigan that were on the visit. Okay. So, um, and then like from New Orleans, um, you didn't get very many West Coast kids. It's not that they didn't recruit a lot of West Coast kids. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's what they would tell us all the time. We don't recruit very many West Coast kids. What's so funny is we found a coach one time. Oh, sorry, Latuanis. No, I was just making a statement. I was just saying that most West Coast kids don't want to go to the cold. So that's what I was right. Say. Oh, and it was snowing. It was snowing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. You were like, bro, it's cold out here. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. We ran into yeah. a coach one time in the airport, and she was from Virginia, which is my hometown. So we were just, we were in line, actually, and we were talking and telling, you know, Jada plays basketball. And Gary was like, well, you know, my husband's always talking. So he was like, I don't know. You might want to check her out. You might want to check her out. And she was like, I don't know. If you live on the East, on the West Coast, we don't get a lot of people from the West Coast that want to come East because of the climate. You know, that's a right. change. But Jaden did it. <laughs> and you know what? Jaden reached out to a football player at Northwestern who was already um, receiving NFL buzz. And he actually did. He went in the first round, top recruit, DB. And he reached out to him and he said, listen, if you want to get to the NFL, you might as well get used to playing in the cold now. He goes, and that's mm. why I chose Northwestern. And his top two were Northwestern <laughs> and Notre Dame. So Jaden and he related and he still talks to him. So that yeah, was, that makes sense. he you helped him. <laughs> weather. Yeah. You yeah. He was like, bro, that you can't let the weather deter you from your feet. <laughs> no. I mean, and Lawrence was willing to move out that way as well. Uh, but, you know, if the numbers were right, right. he said he could have moved out to uh, Michigan. You know, so I said, okay. expound upon that, Shanae. You said if the numbers were right, what led you to decide which school was a good fit for him? And I know that the numbers had to be right. How did you advocate for your son and how did you make that happen? Because I know, like we said, D2, D3 schools, they don't offer full rides. So right. what was your goal? And tell them how you went after that. And you was like, <laughs> not taking no from Well, I, I basically told them, I said, I'm not paying this type of money. I said, and if you can't give us any more, then we're not going to sign with you guys. I'm not going to commit. You know, they try to force signing that commitment letter. And I said, no, we're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, so, and even the day of signing the commitment day, they try to send us revised numbers. And I'm like, no, I'm still coming out of pocket a ton of money. I said, no, that's not what this is about. And I said, plus my son has a 4.2 plus GPA. He can get a scholarship alone on academics. I said, so right. no one is even offering that. Um, he went to Redlands a couple of times on visits on his own. And he really liked the atmosphere there. And when we started talking to the coaches and they started giving us the numbers and I'm like, okay, Lawrence, <laughs> you can't pass this up. This is like almost a hundred percent full ride, you know, and he said he felt comfortable there. And so we decided to uh, go ahead and, and sign him up for that school. That's awesome. And it's a D3. Yes, it's a D3. Um, but I do know that he said that they've had, you know, some scouts come down there, look at some of their seniors. So, you know, I mean, it's not that a D3 school is bad, right? you know, um, but they still have scouts that come down there. And of course, you know, if you're doing something good, then, you know, you'll get looked at as well. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. 
how's he doing? How's he, how's he doing academically? How's he doing in the football program? Is he happy? He's happy. He's whenever I talk to him or whenever I see him, I always ask him, how are you doing? How are the classes? He's getting adjusted. He runs to every class. Um, you know, he, he leaves his car. I told him, I said, you don't got a scooter? Lot. He was like, girl, no, he runs. <laughs> he, doesn't, he said he doesn't need it. He said, I could run 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. So he's fine. Um, I think his longest day is Wednesday. It starts at 4 a.m. And he probably is not in finished till like 8 o'clock at night. Ooh. But other than that, I know. <laughs> other, he said the only class that could be, that is born is economics. He said, you know, he kind of falls asleep. But we all know Lawrence falls asleep. So well, Tell them why you know that. <laughs> Tell them why. <laughs> he was voted uh, most likely to fall asleep in class. Oh, at school. <laughs> There's a picture of him asleep and, in, yeah, in and the they senior year book, you guys. <laughs> well, he would be in good company with Layla because Layla, my daughter, she falls asleep in the car, you know, on the sofa. She's She's a sleeper, but, you know, as long as she gets the material, as long as she gets what she needs, she can go ahead and sleep. But she's a sleeper, too. But he has a reputation too, Shanae, right? <laughs> of like staying up all night, pulling all nighters, even through high school. With yeah. all AP classes, I imagine that he would have yeah, to. That's tough. Yeah. See, and I never once had to get on his case about Lawrence. Did you do your work? Did you do this? Do you never once had to go behind him and check? Did you turn this in? Because he knew if he didn't keep his grades up, one, he wouldn't play football. So, you know, he had already, and he has OCD. You know, so <laughs> that's not a bad thing when you have no, all the stuff it's going not. on. So how does that work with his roommate? I'm sorry. How does that work with his roommate situation? If he's how many roommates does he have? One. And the roommate is down to earth. He's O lineman. Um, he's from Washington. He's a really nice guy. And so is he's he a freshman as well? Yes. Uh -huh. okay. And I'm glad that he has someone that's down to earth because, you know. He's not, Lawrence is not the type that likes to be around cocky, arrogant, you know, and just showboat kind of players. Mm -hmm. it, it rubs him the wrong way. And Elliot is just really a down to earth um, guy. And I really, and I, his parents are really nice as well. That's wonderful. Yeah. I have one more question that I want you to share. You said that his major is CPA. He's following in his grandfather's footsteps, right? Is that what inspired yes. him to choose that? Yes, his you know his grandfather is this year fifty <laughs> years fifty or fifty one years he's been an accountant and um, you know he will talk to his grandfather constantly about how much money can I make or and you know <laughs> about this and right. I want this so yeah and plus like I said numbers come extremely easy for Lawrence if it didn't I don't think he would fall in that path of being an accountant but he loves numbers it's so I'm cool like, watching go them. for it. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. You guys, they do a family trip every year to Mexico. And last year they took Jaden and then they have another family uh, tradition that they go to Lowry's Steakhouse. Yeah. At the uh -huh. end of the year, uh, Christmas the year time. they took Jaden on that too. But what, what was striking to me was you guys went on vacation for a week. Jaden and Lawrence went the whole trip. She kept asking if they were twins. Finally, like towards the middle of the trip, she was like, yeah, they're twins. Cause she got tired of saying, well, no, you know, yes, they're twins. And her brother, your brother, coach Holmes was actually training them on the sand and they would get yes. up at six in the morning and they would go to the beach and girl, they was talking to girls that was 19 years old. Okay. Don't watch this, Jaden. <laughs> the girls yeah, was they, talking they, to them. How about that? The girls exactly. was talking to them. And they were like, they were like, oh, okay. We're getting some attention. They were 16 years old. That know, was, wow. Those, that was, those were fun. They looked yeah, like they had yeah. a good time. Yeah. They had a very good time. And I'm glad because I'm glad that they they were able to go on this trip together because as you can see, Jay left, Lawrence left, and that's memories that they'll have, you know, yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. So do they keep in touch now? I know Jada has a bestie. She actually goes to school with my daughter, Layla. She plays on the basketball team, but she's Jada's bestie who's at Cal. So they, before they left, they were always on the phone, FaceTiming, but you know, schedules because of right. work, classes, workouts. How do um, Jaden and your son keep in contact? Do they keep in contact? Do they FaceTime? Do they text? How oh do yeah, they, they constantly stay in contact with one another. They also have group chat, uh, uh, group texts. I think it's him, Jay, and Chris. And I, I think, think Juan I think is involved Juan in that. Yeah. Juan is involved in that group text as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they constantly keep in touch with one another. 
That's good. Which is good. Hold each yeah. other accountable and, you know, bounce ideas and frustrations, you know. Yeah. So it's good to have somebody who's going through the same thing that you're really close to. So that's and they ride right on each day. other. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, what is it? The the princess, Jay Oh, my God. Me. They're they so gave sweet. Lawrence uh, a Chris uh, Bur- uh, going away card with the princess on it, and then gave him a little uh, stuffed animal that was a princess. <laughs> and then La- Lawrence, for his 18th birthday, Lawrence picked out a pink bunny and sent it to him. You know, so they have this, you know, bro, bromance, bromance. going back and forth. <laughs> Yeah, he said we're gonna be doing this for life. He thought he said this is funny. Yeah, yeah. I love their yeah, relationship. He's, he's, my, he's like my second son. I love him today. Yeah, I love Lois, him today. Yeah. Lois ours too. So we we she was feeding Jaden when Jaden was over there, and we were feeding uh, when he was over here. <laughs> okay, making lunch for him and Jay every yeah. single day. Yeah. Lawrence is like, look, I don't have that much room in my backpack for Jay's lunch. So I can't <laughs> take this to school. You know. <laughs> He started sending a cooler. <laughs> Just put this I in did. <laughs> Yeah, for football. And Thank then all the that. football players would come. Thank you, know, you No that. problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not to take care of the boys, you know. All right, takes a village. Takes yeah. a village. It yeah, does. It does. Well, I don't have any more questions, ladies. Do you want to close out with any questions? I have a question. I want to know, what would you what would you want to leave our listeners with? You know, seeing that um, Lawrence is at a D3 school, um, what would you want, what would, your last words? to the parents, the listeners, um, in um, the journey that they're taking their kids on, if they're watching right now, what would you tell them? Don't get frustrated because even if your kid is not picked up for D1 and you think your kid is a D1 player, mm-hmm. there's still other schools that they can go to and still shine and still get noticed and looked at. Um, just because Lawrence didn't get picked up for D1, that didn't stop him. He still continued on and he's loving it. He's having a great time, Um, you know, and I didn't think as a freshman he was going to start and he starts on special teams, um, punt return. He does all that. Now, I know he wish he has more playing time, but that just comes with growth experience. And there's a lot of seniors on the team right now, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't let that stop him. He still pushes and, you know, he still is going to make the best out of, you know, his um, years there at college. I've gone to a couple oh, yeah. of games and he stands out. I mean, he really does stand out. He's very athletic. He's more, well, I don't want to say most athletic, but he's very athletic and he stands out. And I know that the coaches have recognized that. So they've talked about yeah. eventually they're going to put him at that corner spot because they see that oh, yeah. the ability to do it. So we're so proud. And of he's, him. he's excited about that too, yeah. you know? So I just tell him, keep grinding, keep doing what you're supposed to do and take care of business and it, everything yeah. will work itself out. Yep. Awesome. Well, we're excited that he we have another one from the IE that has gone yes. on, put in the work and has gone on to college, like you said, to get his education first, because that's what it's about. Get your education first, get that taken care of, and then be a part of a great program. So we're yes. excited and congratulations on raising Thank such you. a awesome young man. And we wish him so much success. And we look forward to just all the great things that he's going to do. Yep. Thank you very much. I appreciate being on this podcast with you guys. Thank you. Thank for you. Thanks for me. accepting our invitation. <laughs> yeah. No problem. You guys had me a little nervous there, but I'm okay. Girl. <laughs> you, did you did great. Just telling your story. Yep. Yeah. Thank you again. Yep. We appreciate you. No so that's it. Mom balls out. Mom, Mom balls, balls out. out. Bye. Mom balls out. Mom balls out. <laughs> <laughs>